and it still seems like the, they're trying to make sure people are safe. It doesn't sound like that is it, confirmed at this point that this situation is not still unfolding from a perspective of could there still be somebody out there. We know there were gunshots fired. It's unclear exactly who fired those gunshots, although we heard from Clarissa Ward and our Fred Plakin that typically people aren't walking around with guns in this area. Uh, important to note, the State Department now encouraging Americans in London to let their loved ones know they are okay. So again, we want to make sure that that information gets out there as the situation is unfolding. And I want you to see this right now, a chaotic scene unfolded at a bar near London Bridge. A witness inside the bar captured video of multiple police officers yelling for people to get down on the floor. Let's listen for just a moment. So you see that bar had a lot of people inside. Police were looking for a couple of people who may have been connected to a stabbing incident is our understanding uh, when this video was taken. CNN International Diplomatic Editor Nick Robertson is joining us now again from the scene near London Bridge. And Nick, I understand people were being evacuated around you? People were being evacuated around us. The police were moving rapidly. Armed police were moving into the area. We were told to move back because there were armed officers in the area. The police line has now gone static. It gives an indication here that they have set a perimeter. They have decided the, the limit that they want to cordon off. We have seen officers on this street here detain a couple of young men. Perhaps they were drunk. Perhaps they've been abusive to the officers. They checked them out. They gave them a thorough, uh, a thorough pat down to see that uh, they didn't have any, any kind of weapons on them um, and then let them go but the situation here right now just on the street corner here you can see two uh, armed officers they have uh, face masks on they have uh, bulletproof helmets flak jackets automatic weapons they seem to be at the moment standing casually is the wrong word but they're standing they're standing uh, patiently if you will on that corner they don't give the impression that they believe there's an immediate threat in this area but this i have to stress is the outer cordon area at the moment for the police the police are staging vehicles just around the corner this is a massive area as best i can tell from this vantage point that's been cordoned off i would say half a mile to a mile back from where borough market is we have seen here as well, just in the last minute or so, an ambulance leave uh, that area with its lights flashing. But what we, the picture that is emerging here at the moment, as best we can tell, uh, is that that an area, perhaps a circumference of about a mile, all around Borough Market, all around uh, London Bridge, we're on the south side of the river here, um, has been cordoned off, and the police seem to be, um, in some sections of it, going through and checking, checking people. But at this moment, this location we're in, compared to when we were talking just a little bit earlier, where the act activity was absolutely frenetic, um, this has sort of settled down to, uh, to a cordon that's in place. So you're just been trying to go back to your house around the corner yeah, yeah. Uh, and what's the situation for you can you get to your house no you can't get to your house uh, why not because the road's blocked the road's blocked yeah so Anna, you can see for some people here, for some residents in this community, in this area, um, that are not even able to get back to their houses at the moment. And that is, gives you an indication of, of the police cordon, the scale of the operation. This is an area where there will be tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people living. This is a, this is a relative, though it's a business district, it is relatively densely populated. So a lot of people we've seen here coming to speak to the police, asking if they can get to their houses. And at the moment for this gentleman next to me, uh, he and others we've seen here and are not able to get to the houses at this time. Let me read you uh, something that the Metropolitan Police just tweeted out. They're instructing people to run, hide, and tell. The, this tweet says you must first run to a place of safety. This is a better option than to surrender or negotiate. If there's nowhere to go, then hide. Turn your phone to silent and turn off vibrate. Barricade yourself if you can and tell the police by calling 999 when it is safe to do so. Given they just sent this tweet out, James Galliano, does that tell you something about this being an ongoing situation and they perhaps don't know what they are dealing with just yet? 
Absolutely. And Anna, watching the video that we just that, uh, you just announced and, and watching how the police in London were handling that, when you're in a hostage rescue realm, and I served on the hostage rescue team for four years, what you're looking for in a situation like this, a kinetic situation, is non-compliance. So you're telling everybody, get down, get down, get down, get down. The person that is not complying is going to immediately get your attention. Now, the difference in between the way we handle things in the U.S. in, in the realm of, of mass shootings and, and terrorist incidents, we always instruct folks here in the United States, and it's a little different from what they're putting out in London. We tell folks, run, hide, and at last resort, fight. You want them to get as far away from the situation as possible for their own safety. If they can't do that, we want them to hide. But in a lot of situations, like in some of the school shootings of recent vintage, that ends up being more casualties. And the last thing we want them to do is to confront the attacker. So, and then the London police added on the tell. Absolutely. You see something, you say something. Even if you think it's, it has nothing to do with the situation in and of itself, that one piece could be critical in solving the puzzle. Okay, we now know you, the UK P Prime Minister Theresa May has been informed of these incidents ongoing in central London. She's en route to Downing Street and is being briefed on her way in. Downing Street is telling CNN a COBRA meeting, this top security meeting, has been tabled now for Sunday morning. I want to bring in CNN national security analyst Peter Bergen. Peter, we're looking at video. This is just a short time ago. People um, with their hands on their head, walking by police officers. Again, three separate situations that London police are responding to right now. One on London Bridge, one in the borough market where there was a stabbing and a separate incident happening in Vauxhall. What's your assessment, Peter, of what's going on right now? Well, I, I would say three things. First of all, multiple incidents uh, suggests, uh, doesn't suggest random acts of violence. It suggests a coordinated terrorist attack. Uh, it also suggests a conspiracy involving multiple people. The fact that Theresa May is going into a COBRA meeting Sunday, early Sunday morning, uh, they don't summon a COBRA meeting uh, if it's uh, deemed to be something that's just ordinary acts of violence. This is essentially uh, the top uh, national security officials of the United Kingdom getting together to discuss what's going on. I would add to that, um, Anna, that ISIS called for attacks in the West during Ramadan, the holy month that we're now uh, several days into. They called for these attacks back on Friday. We don't know who's behind these attacks. Uh, but uh, this doesn't appear to be random acts of violence. They selected London Bridge, one of the most iconic targets uh, uh, in the world uh, for the first uh, attack, and then moved to Borough Market and then to Vauxhall for other attacks. Um, and so taken all together, uh, certainly the British reaction to this suggests that they are treating this as a terrorist incident. Otherwise, they wouldn't have summoned a COBRA meeting. Uh, the fact there are three incidents recalls, in a sense, the Paris attacks where there are multiple attacks. And, of course, we've seen these vehicle uh, in, uh, attacks many, many times in the West of late, including, by the way, in the United States. I mean, many viewers will recall the Nice attack where 80, 80 plus people were killed and the Berlin attack where a dozen people were killed. But there was also a very similar attack in Ohio State University uh, where luckily no one actually was killed, but quite a number of people were injured. Uh, and uh, in, in, in that attack, there was uh, an attempt not only to use vehicles as weapons, uh, but also the perpetrator uh, you actually tried to stab a number of people and unfortunately uh, injured at least nine people. Uh, so, you know, we still, it's a fluid situation, but given ISIS attacks in Ramadan, uh, given the COBRA meeting that we know is being summoned, uh, given the modus operandi of these attacks, it looks very, sim very like an ISIS inspired attack or maybe even an ISIS directed attack given the scale of the attack and the potential lethality here. Again at this point police are very careful about the information they're releasing and are not are not calling this a terrorist attack but you and, and our other law enforcement analysts say that it is the it has the markings of a terrorist attack potentially ISIS involved here and in terms of the timing this is Ramadan um, we also know that it's the day before what was going to be a benefit concert in Manchester following the attack that happened there uh, less than two weeks ago in which that, that bomb explosion that took place right after the Ariana Grande concert. Again, these are different areas that and in this case, London Bridge, these are these are such soft security areas that they're soft targets is what we keep on hearing. And this is obviously something that law enforcement is trying to get a handle on in terms of preventing 
soft targets from being vehicles or being uh, potential vulnerabilities for people who may be lone wolves, Peter. But unfortunately, Anna, you know, I mean, yes, they're soft targets, but if you try to reinforce every soft target that exists in, in the West, uh, essentially you'd be turning every uh, kind of road, every tourist attraction, every concert into uh, essentially, you know, a highly policed uh, airport security kind of place. And I mean, we don't have the resources for that, nor do I think we have the inclination for that. Um, we don't want to turn our you know, major Western cities into kind of no-go areas where it's impossible to travel. They just admit, so unfortunately, you know, this is something that will continue. And ISIS, of course, has been calling for these kinds of attacks using vehicles and, and stabbings for some period of time. And even if you go back to Al-Qaeda back in, you know, 2014 uh, or earlier, Al-Qaeda itself uh, in Yemen was calling for, you know, people using vehicles as weapons. So this idea has been percolating in the jihadist terrorism community for a long time. And to be honest, there's not a hell of a lot you can do about it. You know, do the thought experiment where, for instance, uh, every airport, uh, you, you know, you, you extended the perimeter outside an airport much further and you kind of search people more carefully. In a way, you wouldn't really be solving the problem because you'd be creating a big bottleneck uh, that would be, you know, be suitable for a, a bomb to go off and kill a lot of people. I mean, you can't, if you extend the perimeter, yes, it looks like you're helping, but in some ways you're just kind of moving, moving the problem backwards. So uh, whether that's at airports or significant tourist attractions or concert stadiums, you, you can increase security, you can increase the, you know, make the perimeters further out. But at the end of the day, you haven't really solved the problem because if you're getting large numbers of people anywhere, um, you know, unfortunately, that's going to be an attractive target for terrorists. Stand by with us, Peter Bergen. I want to bring in uh, Lisa Monaco, who is joining us on the phone. She's CNN senior national security analyst. Lisa, first, I want to share with you that we've just heard from Prime Minister Theresa May saying they are treating this as a potential act of terror. And we are putting up um, some of the tweets now that we're seeing from President Trump. The first one reads, we need to be smart, vigilant and tough. We need the courts to give us back our rights. We need the travel ban as an extra level of safety. That was his first tweet following this incident. And then he followed that with this tweet saying we need to be smart. Uh, excuse me, whatever the United States can do to help out in London and the UK, we will be there. We are with you. God bless. We understand the president of the United States has been briefed. As we're putting the different puzzle pieces together as law enforcement on the ground, are doing as well, Lisa. What's your read? 